Hey guys, Chrono 16 here. Today is date October 17th, 2013. Uh, guys, they have released new images of Comet Ison taken from the Hubble telescope on October 9th while the government was shut down. Uh, these guys explain how they download the pictures on October 9th and then they go through uh, what you're seeing in the pictures. These uh, obviously are the new pictures of Comet Ison in different filters. So instead of me trying to explain it to you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you some clips of the hangout that they had today on the 17th explaining these new pictures that you're looking at here on screen and uh, you know how they took them and everything. Uh, I suggest you guys go to the link under this video. Look at that video yourself of what they talked about. The full video is 58 minutes. What I've tried to do in this video is take key points of that video and put them together here so you can see quickly, in a quicker amount of time, exactly what they're talking about you're looking at in these pictures. Uh, they break it down better, better than I can, guys. So we're going to get on over to that clip of the Ice and Hangout. Again, all the video links to the pictures, the Ice and Hangout is under this video, guys. I told you that I would update you when something new came out about Ice and well, something new just come out about icing. Anyway, guys, you have a blessed day and many blessings and much love to you all out there. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's talk about the image. First of all, Zolt, do you have some handy that we can take a look at here? I have an image handy. Let me oh, go I knew, you, I knew somehow that you might. <laughs> I know. Let me go ahead okay. and share my screen. So while he's doing that, Max, this, this these images were taken when exactly? That was last week. Uh... Kind of in the middle of the night, October 8th, October 9th, right in there. And uh, it was kind of funny because a lot of us were at a meeting in Denver, John Yang Lee and myself and a number of other uh, people who are using Hubble to study ISON. So, you know, that's just a reality in science is that most of your collaborators are elsewhere and often you're working together from a great distance. So it was actually pretty cool to actually all be in the same hotel. You know, it's a new day was coming down. So you guys are watching it as they're coming down and processing it as quickly as you can, right? Yeah, getting a, getting our first quick look, and it was quite fun to actually be together to experience that, which did is you, actually it might be surprising to your audience to realize how rare that is. Yeah. Did you have did you have bets on how it was going to look like? Uh, no bets really. I think we, uh, you know, I would say we we weren't too surprised. You know, obviously, I think we're getting to you know the fact that there was some speculation about what we were going to see. All right. Um, but we weren't the ones doing that speculating. I think we none of us were too surprised with what we saw. <laughs> okay, Zolt, so here you have it up now. Uh, this is the press release image, right, the one that we this put out today? This is the press release image that we put out today. So this is a com color composite. It's a composite of two observations in two filters, a blue filter and a, a red filter or infrared filter. And it shows a little bit of color. It's uh, kind of the color that we would expect. I think maybe other people can expand on that a little bit. Um, you notice there's no stars in it. The stars have been removed. They're moving during the exposures and between the exposures and Max's uh, can, we'll talk about that I think a little bit, the processing. We've talked about that before that in this uh, way we process the images the stars are removed and um, so there you have it. Uh, I guess the news from the image, the first thing you notice is that it's got if the nucleus is still a nucleus, and there was some reports that, uh, some evidence that the comet may have broken up, uh, but it looks like from our image, at least at the resolution that we have, um, which is the best available, uh, the comet is still intact. The nucleus is still intact. The tail is much bigger than it was before, um, uh, and it looks like a comet. We have a sense of the exposure times on these images. Uh, what were the times, well, not a, uh, Max? Yeah. They were we, uh, tens, of, so tens of minutes. Yeah, and two filters. Um, well, for the 775 uh, filter, it was 348 seconds, and I think we got something more like um, times two, and then uh, something more like 500 seconds yeah. for the B filter times two. So that's the total amount of exposure time we had. Okay. So, Bonnie, do you have any comments on this? What does this tell you? What, what do you think about what Hubble's seeing? You're muted, I think. Muted, yeah. Oh, I'm muted. Okay. Um, I think what we're seeing here is 
something that's not too unexpected, and I think it's funny that with all the hoopla over this whole thing that it turns out to be just coasting along, fizzing along, and... Um, just being a, lot... a comet, being its yeah, comet self. being itself. Uh, and so it's, it's overhyped, it's underhyped. People yeah. can't make up their minds about what they want it to be, and just let it be what it is. Oh, it. <laughs> it's awesome. That's just all it is. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a yeah. comet. It's going let to be it, cool no matter what. Exactly. Let, it be, let it be a comet, people. Jean Yang, what about what about? Do you have any comments on this? Does what were you? Uh, had did you have any expectations prior to these images uh, of what the comet might be like? Well, um, not much expectation. Although I, I I did hope that the comet is the comet is uh, is behaving is behaving. And but you know from the images we see that it's 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 a, it's a still very nice comet and uh, as uh, as Zolt said it's much bigger now and uh, um, I want to point out one thing um, if you look at compare this image if you still remember what the uh, April image looks like the the direction of the tail actually changed. Oh, uh, Zolt, you have an image that kind of illustrates that, don't you? I do. Here's the comparison. Now this on the right is the current October image. On the left is an image from, from actually from the May mm -hmm. observations. Ah, and these okay. are uh, as uh, as close as I could get. It. These are scale uh, intensity scaled equivalently and and spatially scaled equivalently. So they should be a pretty much apples to apples comparison. The only difference really is that they're taken with two different filters. Right. And and, and I think in this in, in this in the two images you'll show here, uh, they are displayed in different orientations. But if you rotate them to both to north up. Like the the same sky orientation, you'll notice that the the, the direction of the tail actually uh, lift. That's because the Earth is now on the other side of the sun compared to to. Ah, uh, uh, right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Not that wrong so, so wait, say so. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying the tail has flipped to the other side. That's right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I think I think what this really illustrates well is just the change in the uh, the brightness and size, apparent size, because everything else is the same, right, Zol? Yeah, it should be as close as I could get. So to I wanted insane. to show that that yeah, you know, as far as we can tell, the, the nucleus is still intact. So this is zoomed way up. As you can see, the bar is is 100 pixels long, which is uh, four arc seconds in this camera. Mm -hmm. And at the distance of the comet, it's that's uh, 5,500 kilometers is the bar. So that's a 100 pixel long bar. So the each pixel is 55 kilometers. Yeah. I also okay. see Max as an image, actually, a different color of scale, I think, right, Max? Yeah, I was just looking at the actual uh, data where you can see it's sitting on the camera. And just for reference, this is the wide field camera three, which is roughly 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. And you can see that the tail clearly goes off the edge of the chip here. So even just the uh, you know the the tail that you can see here would be 4,000 times 55 kilometers would be you know over 200,000 kilometers that you see just here. And of course, the tail goes off the edge, and we know from other ground-based images that the tail is quite quite long, and it tapers off. So it's a little difficult to say where the tail ends, but certainly just in the image, you know, what you're seeing here in the Hubble image is uh, on the order of, I guess, 200,000 kilometers. I see. So, but actually, these images are very telling because I think uh, there were a lot of uh, speculation about exactly how the comet would emerge after. You know, perihelion, and so uh, it looks like the, the the nucleus is pretty compact. So, that that's the, what does that tell us about the you know the, the composition of the comet? Well, it's obviously not as uh, the loose rubble pile you know that maybe some people thought that it's just ready to fall apart even before it encounters the sun. Um, and you know, of course, this is what Hubble can do best: is examine the nucleus up close mm -hmm. with high sensitivity and high resolution. And if anything were falling off of there, if it was crumbling or disintegrating at all, we would definitely see it clearly. We've done this before with Hubble, uh, witnessed this, and so obviously we're not seeing that. And so it does seem to say something about, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. integrity of the nucleus, that it's not mm -hmm. maybe as fragile as some people had thought. It's certainly not beginning to fall apart. doesn't really say much about what's going to happen next. Um, mm -hmm. There's been some good analysis about, you know, the likelihood that it will now survive its close encounter with the sun, but... I think we'll there just was a lot of unknowns see. going into this, so we didn't know for sure if the comet was, you know, how loosely packed, like we said, whether it was going to break up or even if it was going to survive perihelion. And I think now, and Bonnie and John Yang, you can comment on this if you uh, if you want to. Uh, I think that's not expected to happen now, correct? 
uh, in other words, break up uh, as it goes around the sun. It's supposed to stay intact, correct? Well, right, when, there's, go ahead, John. Oh, um, well, I, I would say that it, it doesn't happen now, but uh, uh, it, the possibility will still, still, still exist as it moves closer and closer to the sun, especially when it's uh, when it's nearest to the sun. That's where the heat, you know, the, the heat is the, the strongest and the gravity is strongest. So okay. we, we, it's still hard to predict what happened. But uh, my colleague, my have a colleague, um, uh, Matthew Knight and uh, Kevin Walsh, they did some simul they did some very nice studies, very detailed studies about the possibility of what is coming to break up during the during the uh, perihelion passage, and their result is that uh, the possibility is small. There was some so, speculation that okay. there was a there might be some jets or some sort of material coming <laughs> off of the the comet, uh, and I think you've got some 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 more information on that, correct? That's right. Um, yeah, if you remember in April, in the April image, we uh, after we did we did some enhancement, uh, we can clearly see a jet in a somewhat direction, and uh, from that, based on that jet, we actually uh, um, determine where the the spin pole of the comet was, um, and uh, so so after the comet goes behind the sun for for several months, now Hubble gets to take a look at take a look at it again, and then we are, everybody is curious about whether the jet is still there and how it, it does it look like. So we we use these new images as Sean's can on screen out. Yeah, and, this is uh, what Max is showing now. I've got it up. So go yeah, ahead and feel free to yeah, describe it. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we we did the same processing for the images, and uh, we are we, then we look at the the, the the somewhat direction, and then to then um, you know there's nothing there in this image. There's no no jet in the somewhat direction, and um, so so. Uh, I mean, that, it doesn't say the jet is gone, completely gone. It just says that. Uh, we do not. We do not see this jet in the same direction as. Okay. Can, can you? Okay. So uh, there's. You, you found that there's no jet, and this image is what you're you're using to explain why that is. What is this image we're looking at? Can you describe what it is? What? Uh, oh yes. Yeah. So so you know obviously the upper panel is the is the is, is the image that we started to work with the original Hubble image, and then second image we we did the enhancement. The way we did the enhancement is that. We assume a uh, a common model, which is like the average of all, of all the comments, and then we subtract out that 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 model. And that model we subtract out was uh, is a uh, is a symmet is symmetric uh, with respect with with respect to the center. So if there's any a uh, asymmetry like enhancement of a jet in the sunward direction, then it will show up. So uh, this this uh, this comment so far been going along just fine. Not a whole lot of uh, Surprises here. Um, do you have any? Uh, was there anything about the Hubble observations that you found uh, particularly uh, surprising or uh, interesting about what, what, what's what's happening with the comet now? Well, I think that the most interesting thing is that we don't see that jet anymore, uh, and that uh, this being able to see this jet depends a lot on well, careful models. I was just trying to uh, I was just trying to illustrate a little bit what John Yang was talking about. So right now I'm showing like the image, you know, my attempt to make the cleanest image that I could make to get rid of uh, you know, in previous hangouts we talked, I'll back up a little bit here to show some of the messy images with cosmic rays and star trails. And you know, I so it was my job to kind of make the cleanest image I could from the, all the input images, and that's what I, I gave to John Yang Lee and he applied his model. So I'm just sort of blinking back and forth between my clean image uh, and then his, where his model has been applied. So I was just sort of showing the difference there of his, you know, once he uh, subtracts his model, and it just allows us to reveal what's going on, uh, especially in close to the nucleus. So which is which? What's that? This is the mo this is uh, John Yang Lee's uh, model subtracted uh, version of, of my clean image. And this is my clean image, so I'm just toggling back and forth. Okay. And you can see how much more you can see once once John Yang has done his processing. You can really see in towards the nucleus much mm. more clearly, and in particular that there is no sunward jet there, like we saw so clearly in uh, his earlier observation back in April. Okay, I'm glad this is a good time to talk about uh, one of the one of the uh, things that we had mentioned earlier. I think in one of our meetings. Go back to the other image, the 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 one you just had up. The no. The, raw, the one with the star trails in it a little bit, this one. So there's a lot of stuff in here, and we're gonna let we're gonna let people people are gonna be downloading Hubble data. They're gonna presumably see some of these things. Let's identify what these are now, and so that people so that we can 
get all the questions answered and all the conspiracies yeah. dealt with uh, from <laughs> okay. So anyone in the watching the hangout on Google Plus, I did post that that image there live. So if you want to see full quality of it, you can go into the hangout event as well. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of stuff here. Why don't you explain all these things? What what are all these strikes, streak, the streaks and the spikes and everything else? Yeah, so uh, for this one filter, this is the F775W filter. We only got two exposures in each filter. So what I'm doing right now is just toggling back and forth between those two exposures. So you get a sense of uh, a couple things. You certainly see the comet, but you also notice um, star trails. Those are those parallel lines. You get a real sense of motion here that we're tracking a moving object because those streaks you see, those parallel streaks, uh, are stars in the background. And of course, if we're tracking the comet and we take a couple hundred second exposure, the stars become streaks. And then you also see a random assortment of cosmic rays in each image, but of course it's different cosmic rays in each image. And you also notice some things about the camera. There's The camera has two chips, so that's why there's that dark streak running through the middle of it. But you might also notice that that dark streak shifts a little bit. Uh, we do that intentionally, that's called dithering, such that when we combine the exposures, so now I'm gonna display a combination, just a simple combination of those exposures, and you see that the gaps don't overlap, so we can the images sort of fill in each other's gaps, and you really see all the star streaks and all the cosmic rays together here. And you can, yeah, you can also see the the difference in angle of the star trails as well from the different exposures. So as as Hubble followed the comet, those stars, which were points, got smeared across the CCD. So that's right. So then we, uh, we have software to combine the images in a way that actually cleans out all those artifacts. And so after doing that, just here's sort of a before and after. And you can see that because we only took two exposures, we can't actually reject the artifacts that are in the gaps there that run at that, that diagonal there running through the image. So I do apply another step. Um, two images is not great. We like to get three or four or even five to really clean up an image. In this case, we, were, we only had one orbit, Hubble orbit, to work with, and we're trying to get two filters. So we could only get two exposures. So you'll see that even when I've cleaned up the image, there's still a fair amount of residual uh, cosmic rays. And even you can still see a hint of the, the, the star trails. Uh, so it's tough to clean it all up. I did apply a, a next step here where you can see I'm just toggling now. That kind of gets those residuals, uh, which we know are just cosmic rays. Again, you might look at this and say, hey, isn't the comet breaking up? Look at all those little particles. But no, we know that those are just residual cosmic rays that we now, cannot Now, I'm going to do out. something a little funny. In DS9, of course, we can use any color lookup table. Um, I happen to be using a blue one here because it just helps my eye see things. Is DS9 the is, the, is the viewer he's using, folks. That's what that is. That's right, for displaying FITS data. I'm not looking at a JPEG image here. This is the actual FITS data. And I'm just going to switch to a rather psychedelic one just because it kind of even it emphasizes even further some of these artifacts. So this is the cleanest image that I could generate. And when I switch to this kind of psychedelic, you can, for one thing, you can kind of see the extent of the tail running off of the chip. But you can, yeah. still, see, you can still see hints of those residual cosmic rays and star trails sitting there. So again, that's not something to get too excited about. I mean, they're kind of running all throughout here. We, we understand them. They're just star trails and bright cosmic rays. And then, of course, the noisiness of this chip gap that runs through the diagonal. Um, and I'll just switch back to the cool. This is called yeah, cool. Yeah, those are those are not spaceships hiding behind the comet. Or That's right. Anything They're like just, that. Uh, you know, we understand all these really? artifacts. There's nothing, nothing to see here, folks. Move along. <laughs> <laughs> Please move along. Yes. 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 Um, okay, so. And then, and then, of course, the last thing again is uh, taking taking this clean image. John Yang was able to generate this model subtracted image, which. Uh, he did very quickly at this meeting last week uh, that we were at in Denver, and you know it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, within a few hours, he was able to realize that there was no jet there. And again, that's you know, other than the fact that the comet is still intact, I would say maybe that's the most interesting and relevant result. You know, the fact that we don't see that jet that John saw back in April. 